Welcome to Your Best Bets, Riviera Week, one of uh, our favorite weeks of the golf season is here. We love this golf course. We love this tournament. Tiger Woods is back. Uh, he has a new brand, new clothing line we got to talk about. So a lot to get to tonight. Uh, let's get right to it. Johnny Strauser is here, slightly under the weather. We were just discussing, but uh, appreciate you just showing up and uh, just soldiering on as always. Well, yeah, you know, I really was excited to to, uh, to talk about Riviera. It's one of my favorite golf courses that they play on tour. So I was I was excited about it. We got to, had to figure out a way to get through it one way or the other there. But uh, yeah, I think that uh, staying up an hour later to watch uh, watch that Super Bowl game uh, set me back on my sleep. That's what I'm at least going to blame it on there. So the new overtime rules that I like Kyle Shanahan, or he claims he knew what they were. Um, I did not know that that was actually the overtime rule. So, oh, oh, so you were like, "What's going on here?" <laughs> yeah, I was like, they took the ball, and then, and then, as soon as Jim Nance and Tony Romo both questioned it, I was like, "There's something I don't know," and I got to figure out what's going on here. And then I think it was Adam Schefter or something that tweeted the rules like right after, and I was like, "Oh," which, which, by the way, I, I. I love that idea that both teams get to touch the ball. I mean, that's, I think that's, that's most important there. Um, So that, that ended up being pretty, pretty incredible. I mean, after just a snoozer of a first half um, that ended up being pretty fun there. And, and what was funny was the speaking of the first half, I got, you know, we've, we've documented my, my lions fandom here and everything like that the whole first half i read and i follow a lot of lions twitter just not only the media guys but the just fans as well and i don't really like them a ton i don't really interact with them at, at all i just like like to get their thoughts and they kind of irritated me a little bit just because they're 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 fanatical and everything they kept tweeting out they were like oh man if the lions were playing in this they'd be beating both teams and bit on their way to a super bowl let me explain something here. There's no chance the Lions would have won that game. Patrick Mahomes basically had two and a half good football players on his offense in addition to him. You got uh, Isaiah Pacheco. Rashid Rice is, is good. I think he's going to be really good. And you have half of Travis Kelsey, what he used to be, which is still good. I mean, the line is okay, but literally nothing else. And, and that and dude, I, I don't think that was a good Pacheco game, really. And uh, Pacheco was 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 actually really really bad compared to how he'd been in the playoffs and down the stretch. So yeah, he didn't play that great. But he took that team with just the minimal amount of players that they had of of any ability, and beat the best team in the league. The, the 49ers, I think, were the you know consensus number one team throughout the whole season and he beat that team so you know what i know the lions fans are saying oh yeah you know well we beat them week one and and everything you know back in september and and we would have won there's no way that anybody was going to beat patrick Mahomes in that super bowl that was just incredible i mean just the just the you know do him doing him doing his thing with just average football players was just it, it was it was a treat to watch. I mean, it was just a treat, and I can feel better now as a Lions fan saying, you know what, we wouldn't have won that game. We, I, I'm very comfortable saying we, I would have been probably in worse shape had they lost the Super Bowl than than the NFC Championship game after seeing what Mahomes did to uh, to that good 49ers team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some good points there. Uh, you know, and I want to talk about. Mahomes and where he's at legacy wise here in second. Um, this was and and I talked about this in the 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 props bet show that that Rich and I did. This was not a good Chiefs team. I remember watching them on Christmas Day and they lost to the Raiders at home and they looked like they had no path forward. They their offense did it was in shambles. Uh, There's just it just it was a shell of the team that used to be. Um, so the fact that they they've made it here won the Super Bowl for the second straight year. It's, it's really incredible. The, you can't believe it's the same team. But uh, I knew that game was over when the Niners had the ball with about two minutes left, and it was about the 35-yard line, and it was third and four. And the Chiefs had two timeouts, and they're, they're at commercial. 
And uh, by the way, this is where the, one of the cool things of, of having a kid, since you don't, I'll inform you is he was, he's 12 now, you know, we're literally talking strategy. I said, this is, this is kind of the game. They get this first down, they can milk the clock pretty much potentially under a minute. And if they get another first down, the game's over. I, I said, so this is, this is the game. If they can't get this, then the chiefs are going to win. And I don't know how it's going to work out, but, you'll leave time on the clock for Mahomes yep. and this game's going to at least go to overtime. And then you're, you're kind of toast from there. And it's exactly what happened. They, they uh, I think the chiefs put a nice blitz on Purdy had to make him throw it quick uh, incompletion. Uh, they did get, they didn't make the kick, but everyone in the world knew Mahomes was going to at minimum drive down and tie that game. And they almost scored a touchdown. Um, but yeah, I thought the strategy by Shanahan in overtime was uh, with the coin toss was questionable immediately. Um, you know, I, I I get why you would take the ball, but I would just prefer to have the ball second there. With the thought of if Mahomes takes the the Chiefs down and scores, that you you know what you have to do. You could go score and maybe go for two and to win the game because at that point you know. Again, you, you're just in this chess match match with Mahomes where there's nothing. I, I mean, this, from like the fourth quarter on, uh, began the fourth quarter on, there's there's just no way to really get him off the field and stop him. Um, so I'm I'm just yeah, you you said it well when there's just it's just there's just not very many good players around him. I mean, Rishi Rice is a nice receiver; he's a rookie and he'll be a good player. But outside of that, there's not really a receiver on that roster that you feel that you could trust. I mean, McCall Hardman had a nice game, um, but there's, there's a lot of guys where you're like, you know, who's Blake Bell? Um, who's, uh, <laughs> you know, McCall Hardman's nice. Uh, it's just like, it's incredible. It's, it does remind me of Brady back in some of those mid 2010 teams where, you know, you didn't feel like they were that good, but Brady was that good where he could elevate the team no matter what the roster was and get him to the Super Bowl uh, and win the game. Uh, I don't know what else there is to say other than Mahomes is one of the, I mean, he is one of the greats now. And to me, you know, we talk about this with Tiger and Jack quite a bit, um, who has the all time resume versus who played the position the best. And right now, clearly Brady has the resume, but I'm almost wondering if we're at the point, if, no one has ever played the position better than Mahomes, especially this early in his career. I mean, we're, what, 28 years old. I, it's just hard to imagine anyone ever playing the position better. No, I I, there, I actually never really considered that. That Yeah, that's, you know, because we'd always say, well, Tiger's the most dominant player of all time. Jack's got the best resume because he did it really great for – a longer period of time. And so, yeah, I mean, and Brady could, whenever they seem to need a, need a touchdown or need a drive, you know, it would work out. And, you know, I think they're both aided by, by elite coaches, you know, it's two of the greatest coaches of all time there. And, and I know Belichick's really gotten shit on for, for, you know, not being great the last couple of years, but I think they both, you know, they, they both kind of fed off each other that, that Brady could game or I'm sorry, Belichick could game plan based on having Tom Brady at quarterback and, uh, and, and really Andy Reed of the chiefs, he could kind of do that the same with, with Mahomes. But I mean, Mahomes, you, it always feels like since he started and, and they, and they kind of got really great, you know, within his like, you know, second or third year there, it was like, whenever, whenever they needed something, whether they needed to, drive um a first down anything like that the the guy can get it and and you know i kind of i really liked watching and seeing kind of what the uh what the 49ers were doing and just understanding that that you know you're not going to stop the guy you can try to stop him a little bit but you're not going to stop him for the entire game and when it matters he he rises to the occasion and then and you know that one more thing kind of piggybacking off like what detroit and i know dan campbell got a lot of a lot of flack, you know, for, for failing and going for it and everything. He just didn't want to put the ball in the opponent's hands. Now they weren't stopping Brock Purdy um, in the NFC championship game and then end up costing him and everything like that. But that was the thing with Mahomes though, is that, that you can't just give him the ball. And if you can't get those, you can't convert those first downs like that, like San Francisco wasn't able to do, 
I mean, you can have the greatest defense, but I mean, you can have the Baltimore Ravens defense of, of years ago, and Mahomes would figure out a way to move the ball down, uh, you know, with that with that roster and, and, and score a touchdown. It's just simply Andy Reed, his coaching staff puts him in the best possible position to execute. And it's just, it's a treat to watch. Even if you're not rooting for them, it's a treat to watch elite athletes perform when the, the, the toughest situations like the Super Bowl. So, you know, I think he's definitely trending that way. I don't like to really think about legacies until it's close to being over. You know, the thing with Brady is you just keep letting him win and, and everything and with Peyton Manning and, and whatnot. But as it, they get in the twilight of the career, then you kind of think about it and you're like, you know what, this is uh this was going to go down as one of the greats. And I think, uh, I think Patrick Mahomes is going to be that way as long as he stays motivated and, you know, they, they figure out ways to win. He's going to still be present and, and, and be an integral part of that team. And there's no reason that he can't go down as mentioned as like a, a Tom Brady, John LA, you know, uh, Peyton Manning type player. I mean, he, he's definitely trending in that direction. And it's just, it was cool to see despite whether you're rooting for him or not, just what he could do in that, in that moment when he, you know, when a guy had to rise to that challenge. I, I, I'm just, you know, we're, we're six years into him being a starter, making the AFC championship every season, four Super Bowl appearances, three Super Bowl wins, multiple MVPs. I mean, he's, to me, he's already, he's already at least entered the conversation. You know, fascinating to see where the next five, seven years leads us while he's still in his prime. Um, what I like about him is that he seems, I mean, he's, he is really, really sneaky competitive. And you see some mm-hmm. of the – when he's mic'd up and kind of on the sidelines, like he he is into it. He's a gamer. Um, you know, I, I love that. I love – and he – you know, there was a the point in the middle of the season that that Bills game when – what to shake Josh Allen's hand when they lost. And, you know, there was a moment where he was a little, he was a little bit on like complaining about the refs that game with the offsides yeah. calling Kadarius Tony, But – uh Overall, I mean, he's he's really likable and easy to root for, even if it's not your team. Like like you mentioned, and I know you feel this way. I I have a immense respect for watching greatness, and I did for yep. Brady. And not a not a Pats fan, but I, I was I was a Brady guy, and I loved watching him, and I loved watching him operate that offense and key moments, run the two minute drill. I. I so it was. I, I I'm the same way with Mahomes. I mean, I just I love watching him play football because there's just there's you're just not going to see better than what's out there. Um. Anyway, just yeah, yeah. Moving on. Um. The Phoenix Open taking place on Super Bowl Sunday. Um. It got it got a little tough there for for viewing if you were one of the five people trying to watch the finish of that tournament, like myself, maybe yourself as well. Um, and I, I guess my starting point for this is not necessarily the Phoenix Open, but Jesus Christ, betting golf this season is just impossible, is it not? Yes, it's – I mean, nobody with better odds than 100 to 1 – has won yet correct i mean i yeah. believe that's everybody's yeah. been higher than that and it's just like at some point this is this has got to stop i would think because it's just it, it's it's week after week after week and you know i don't usually like throwing any win bets on guys that high because they're they're generally priced accordingly there so yeah i mean it's it's gonna flip and and just like just like sports betting is, I mean, it's going to go through. You're going to go through weird stretches, and I think this is it. But you know what? You got to think at some point. It's it's uh, you know it'll end up flipping. I think it's going to flip this week, but that, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But like, you know, we we gave out these picks and everything like that, and I'm kind of glad we we didn't this last week because. I mean, first of all, the weather made it really, really tough to to pick out those odds there. So you don't know how guys are, you know, focused wise and everything like that. And this is, you know, the event as we'll probably speak about the waste management. It's it's a pretty wild and crazy atmosphere. So some guys play in it because they they like the golf course and like the greens and everything. But you know, it can it can really get you rattled 
um, if yeah. you cross certain holes at the wrong time of the day and everything like that. So, but as far as just overall golf betting, my God, I mean, just hang with us and everything, but I just can't believe the numbers of these guys that are hitting. And that just shows you a lot of it with the depth of the tour. And, uh, you know, obviously with the live guys, you know, not, not playing, who would probably take up a little bit of that field there and, and strengthen it a little bit. But I just, I, I'm waiting for it to turn because it's got to at some point, right? Uh, yeah, I, I feel like we we said that last week. We'll probably say it this week, as you mentioned with with Riviera. But uh, it's pretty astonishing. I mean, I'm not I'm not surprised. Nick Taylor won. <laughs> I was I couldn't be more shocked that Charlie Hoffman almost probably should have won the tournament. And I don't know what his number was. I bet it was over 200. And yeah. uh, I mean, was did I see him warming up on the range, waiting for the playoff, or anticipating a playoff with some sort of like back brace? Did I see that? He had like a. It was like it wasn't a brace. It was like like I think it was a heating vest. Okay, is what yeah. I heard is what it was. Um, okay. I'm not okay. for certain, but that was what the general consensus was uh among twitter x um was that no it wasn't a brace it was keeping the the muscles loose well i you know i just i'm i was thinking out loud as i was watching that i'm like imagine you know you're kind of tuning in at the end before the super bowl checking it out and you see 47 year old charlie hoffman who hasn't won in eight years who has kind of been off the scene for a long time you know, he's, he's got a back brace on or whatever heating pad, whatever it was, something that as people get older, they probably use to, you know, get their muscles and shit like that loosened up. And meanwhile, he hit the longest drive on 18 on Sunday <laughs> with that, uh, you know, just all that in mind. It, it was pretty incredible. Let me ask you to start with you know, I think you and I both think Nick Taylor's a good player, but overall, is it is it good for the Mules uh, to to be kind of bucking the way they have early in the season? Is is it good with kind of everything that's going on in the landscape of golf with Liv and um, no stars really winning at this point? For the Mules, it's good, and that's about it. I mean, truthfully, I we're, right now the PGA Tour needs. Scotty Scheffler and Rory and and Xander and Colin Morikawa and, and JT, they need them to win these events and everything. They don't they don't need they don't need the Nick Taylors and Grayson Murrays to win win these events. I mean, they're great stories. Um, don't get me wrong there. And and that's what makes a lot of times the PGA tour great because you get these guys that come in and, and win the events, and then they're a great story. It's a life-changing week for them. And and it, you know, may or may not propel them to to future success, but at least, you know, can kind of set them up and, and be a wonderful, heartwarming story. But as far as 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 it goes for golf, I think it's pretty terrible that these guys, for for golf because you and I will tune in to watch Grayson Murray win the win the Sony Open and have no problem with it. You know, we'll we'll watch that that Keegan Bradley Grayson Murray playoff, but just the random people, probably a lot of people that are, are watching this, uh, this podcast right now who, who may not have even ever heard of those two guys or, or don't really care about them. They're not going to watch it because you know, who cares? They're going to want to see Justin Thomas and, and um, Jordan Spieth and, and, and Patrick Cantlay and everything, you know, pl- playing well and winning these events. So, you know, it's okay that it happens and it's okay that it happens for a small stretch, but, you know, yeah. I think uh, I think the tour is really, really got to be internally rooting, and even the networks as well. They got to be really rooting for uh, for these these big names, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I think Phoenix is one of those tournaments where you can you can kind of get away with it a little bit yeah. because it's it's a, it's kind of the party and sixteen yep. and um and it, it you know Scheffler was heavily involved in, on Sunday, JT on the surface, you know Sam Burns, Spieth. So at least some of the bigger names were were making appearances on Sunday, but I think that's if we get it this week at Riv, then we're like, okay, what's what's happening here? Um, uh, but I gotta say that was pretty awesome by Nick Taylor to birdie the last what, four holes in regulation to tie Hoffman, birdie the first playoff hole, Hoffman ties him, and then make another birdie on the second playoff hole. I mean, low key, pretty insane to yeah. When in that manner, 
Yeah, I got to admit when the when the Super Bowl started, I I the reason why I didn't watch it was because I was like I don't really want to see Charlie Hoffman just finish this out and win by 3. I I honest to god had it been a close event, I would have I would have watched it, but I tuned turned it off because I was like he, there's nobody's going to catch this guy cuz he's up by 3 shots. And then I just so happened during uh during one of the commercial breaks of the Super Bowl, I just checked my uh I logged in on my my uh YouTube TV on my phone just to see and it said the 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 golf coverage was still going on and I'm like it should be done by now and then I see him make birdie on 18 there and I'm like holy shit so I ended up watching both of it at the same time I watched the playoff and and the Super Bowl but uh but yeah that's that's pretty incredible golf though and and he's he's a good good player he's from Canada uh he kind of famously made that 60 footer uh in the playoff to beat tommy fleetwood at the the canadian open um last year i think that was this is his fourth tour win yeah Yeah. um so you know good player uh really good putter um got it going and everything i um what was funny was is because the so he played really well in the late wave on thursday and made some birdies really early um and then nobody really shot deep super deep on the first round there so they still had the the first round leader bets the the bets were still open so thursday night i'm like you know he played good i'm gonna throw a little bit of money on him to you know maybe he'll do that and then he goes out and shoots 60 grabs first round lead and i'm like all right i want to ride this nick taylor wave here so i had a bet uh actually friday after a lot of the golf had finished he was still playing okay um, he didn't play quite as well on the second day, but you know, uh, understandably after sh- shooting 60, like I'm going to win bet this guy here and kind of forgot about it. And then I saw he got, got in contention there and I was like, okay, you know, it's, it's pretty close there. And then once he got into that playoff there, I was, I was kind of disinterested in the football game. I'm not, not going to lie there. Cause I had that live bet on Nick Taylor. And I was like, Charlie Hoffman, please don't do this to me. Please don't do this to me. And you know, they both birdie, both made great birdies on the, the first playoff hole. And uh, Hoffman almost made birdie on the second one, and and Taylor just jarred it from you know 15, 18 feet to win. But uh, you know, great playing by him, and, and just incredible to essentially birdie his last six holes that he played to win. Yeah, yeah. And when you put it that way, it's 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 pretty incredible. Always nice to get the double first round leader and the win. Yeah. Bet on the same guy. Uh, I can't. I don't know if I've ever done that. So yeah, good on you for, for that call. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't really have much else to say about, about him. I mean, obviously he's proven himself to be a pretty clutch putter, um, a guy that you trust to, to make these in, in yeah. tough, tough situations. Um, um, not much to say about Hoffman either. I mean, we'll see if this is just a flash in the pan, but uh, his last two rounds were pretty incredible to, to get, I think he was like middle, you know, maybe top 10, 12 after the second round and shot two really nice rounds to nearly win. Um, not, as far as other guys, uh, you know, I, I think I cursed Scotty on the front nine when he, I think he birdied a couple early holes and he, the putter looked really, really, really good uh, early in the rounds. Actually, the middle of the third round, I think he birdied five in a row. And then early in the fourth round, he birdied a couple early, and he just looked like, oh, my God, this this is the Scotty Scheffler that I would we were terrified of yes. if, he, if that putter ever got going. And then from that point on, the putter went cold. And uh, really just kind of – it felt like last year, the last, I don't know, 12-ish holes of, of the tournament. Um, still encouraging – Hard to win three in a row, obviously. Only guys like Tiger uh, do that or, or or Stricker at John Deere. But, um, man, it just kind of feels a little bit like deja vu with Scotty. Um, I do want to point out, though, that, again, his strokes gained numbers are just – ball striking are just insane. It's – it's and, and I saw someone compare it on Twitter or X that's uh, – it's kind of like a, 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 you know, a hitter – hitting 400 um now mm-hmm. the, the the problem is is there, you have to putt in golf and and that's that's what's getting them but man if he could if he was he was above uh he was above that zero mark in strokes game putting barely last week but for t uh, t3 finish for hitting the ball that good it's just it's all again ultimately disappointing 
It was. And I, I think we, uh, I think we both kind of jinxed them because we both were like, well, it looks like Scotty's going to end up winning this. And we, we weren't going to have any money on him because his number was so low and it looked like he was going to win. And, and, you know, he 68, 66, 66, 66. That's, that's some pretty good, pretty good shooting there, but he just, you know, got to that back nine there. Once he made a few birdies there and I think he turned in like three or four under par. Um, and then just, he just looked bad over the ball. Like none of his putts is weird with him. Like you look at some guys who, who aren't great putters, but they, and they burn the hole a lot, but then they'll get, have good weeks where they just make stuff. His putts, as soon as they leave the putter face, just don't even look like they're going to go in. There's not enough speed. There's not enough break. There's not, you know, it's always offline. It's like he kind of just guides the putter through and he's instead of just hitting a putt, he's trying to, you know, steer it in the cup and he just. Yep. Has the early looks, walk going too on those. Yep. Yep. Not the good early walk either, but, but yeah. Um, I mean, I'm encouraged though with the, with the positive putting. Cause at one point um, he was at like uh, 0.3 strokes gained or something like that um on the green so that, and, and which is which isn't bad at all so going forward i like that because the ball striking is still there and he's going to have weeks where he just you know kind of forgets his principles of what he's working on with the putter and, and everything and this kind of was was that and uh um but as far as the early part of the season that still does encourage me that he's not you know he's not really disappointed or he's not letting the letting it get to his, his tee to green ball striking. So, you know, he's still going to probably be that same guy. It's just, he's just got to catch fire and he's got to have that, that uh, mindset, that positive mindset putting throughout the week, which he just hasn't, hasn't been able to to have since, uh, since basically Augusta last year. Um, it's all good. Uh, it, Pretty good weeks from from JT and Spieth, the other guys that we've 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 hit on JT quite a bit. We think he's most most of the way back. Resurgence, sort of continuing. We liked him to to both of us. I think liked him to potentially win. Didn't really have his A game, but again, good to see him even when it's not working completely. Still, top fifteen finish. Um, I know you wanted to touch on um, some of the some of the fan behavior with. Uh, a couple of the a uh, couple of our favorites uh, <laughs> tour pros, um, especially on Sunday, there were some videos that came out. And I alerted you quickly when I uh, when I got I caught wind of those. Um, <laughs> don't sir me, okay? <laughs> it was, of course, it had to be. Of course, it had to be Billy Horschel. I mean, the, the gatekeeper of golf himself and golf etiquette. It's got to be Billy Horschel, which it it doesn't shock me one bit that he finally finally lost his cool and everything like that. And he he dropped a couple f bombs directed. I think it was he was playing with like Akshay Batia or something like that, and they were yeah. chirping during his backswing, and he just kind of went off on him. Yeah, didn't he say this is, this is our fucking jobs? It's our fucking jobs. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then, uh, and then Zach Johnson, they were chirping at him for being such a poor uh, Ryder Cup captain, and he just kind of, kind of lost his lost his stuff. But you know, he's an old guy now, and that's a lot of a lot of holes, like he said, and he was just kind of tired and and everything like that. So you know, he just didn't get his didn't get his afternoon nap in and everything like that. But, um. I don't, you know what, this is the golf tournament. This is just what this is. And you know what, unfortunately it's a, it's a fun golf course with great greens, typically great weather. So it's a very attractive event for the early season for the guys. Cause it's not on Poana greens. So it's, it's a, an event that a lot of these guys would love to play in consistently and just kind of enjoy quietly, but you just, you just don't get it with this place. And that's, that's fine. That's, that is what it is. I thought though, from the stories seeing on Twitter and everything that, you know, they kind of lost contain there and it got, it got too far out of control. And you know what, being, being somewhat drunk at a, at a golf event or, or whatever it is, but still having, you know, control of yourself, I, I think is the most fun way to go. Not getting blackout drunk to where, you know, you're just you're stumbling about yourselves, and and that's just me, I guess, being older. I mean, these are these are college kids, and I was a college kid at one point as well. But uh, 
you know, I, I don't mind it if they if they're gonna yell at chirp at these guys, you know, whatever. You just gotta have thick skin and everything like that. But uh, it got you know where the I heard a woman fell off the bleachers, and then they had you know seventy mm-hmm. some people that they kicked off the golf course. Thirty people got arrested. That's a little much, you know. You gotta got to be a little bit better than that. And I think, uh, I, I, I think it was heard loud and clear by the tournament organizers. And I, I think it'll be fun next year, but I think it'll be more like 2021 or 2020 when they kind of had that, that was kind of that perfect vibe that they had for the season. I think it was the year that, t- that your brother, Tim went, um, I think is that was the year they had a real, the, the whole event seemed to be pretty, pretty, you know, pretty cool there. So I don't know what you think. I know we're kind of, older and everything like that but you know if you've got any thoughts on how you know yeah this etiquette and everything yeah i mean i it did it did seem like you you used the term lost contain i think that was pretty appropriate (laughs) um i i did read they had to cut off they cut off alcohol sales on i think think saturday which is traditionally the, the biggest party day um a lot of a lot of delays this week i don't think that helped where People were there and they had nothing else to do other than just, and, and they have a sports book on site at, uh, you know, at the golf course now. So probably a lot of just long stretches where people drank a lot and did nothing else. And uh, when golf resumed, they kind of were frustrated and, um, you know, they let the golfers know. I mean, there, there's always a point where on 16, you know, you'll, you'll get, you know, you hit a bad shot, you'll get the booze and, um, you know, those, those, those crowds will turn on you quick <laughs> at Phoenix. There is the understanding that when you play in this tournament, it is, it is a certain way. And I, I, I think most of the guys get that. I, I saw Max Homa embracing it on, on, on X this week, uh, you know, after missing the cut and that he loves it, you know, a guy like Zach Johnson, it's, it's probably not his vibe, you know, overall and, you know, post Ryder cup, a lot of people giving him shit probably deservedly so in some, some way. Um, yeah, I, I get it. Not, not in my backswing, you know, not when I'm over a putt, do everything you want to say, do or say after I swing the club or after I hit the putt. So I, I, I think there's some reasonability to that as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's nothing totally new with this tournament either, yeah. but the, it did feel like it crossed the line a little bit more this week. Uh, anything else on, on, uh, the, the WM open. Now let's move on to maybe somebody, maybe we can pick a winner that that's under hundred to one here. Real quick. Did you watch live Las Vegas at all? Oh, live, live. I did want to, uh, yeah. So I actually watched, um, my which mm-hmm. was during pebble beach week. And that was very interesting because they they end up canceling uh was it Sunday? Yeah, Sunday, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they canceled cancel Sunday's play at at, uh, at Pebble Beach. So uh Live My Coba was on during kind of the normal go- golf hours. So it got some, you know, it got some pretty big numbers there. So I was I was interested and I was like, yeah, I'll go ahead and watch it. You know, I got got mm-hmm. nothing else to do during here during work. So I'll I'll go ahead and check it out. And I don't know, it was just I don't mind it because it's like me, like me, I just like to watch golf. I like to watch good players hit golf shots. Yeah. And that's what a lot of that, what that is. And it was great to see John Rahm. I mean, I, I know we, it's only been a couple months or whatever since he played in the Ryder Cup. And that's been like the last time we've seen him, but just watching John Rahm is, is, is great. And, you know, it was nice to see him play and everything like that. But you know what? I turned, I turned it off. Um, as like the leaders were coming up 18, because I really didn't care who won the event. Like it didn't, I didn't care if Sergio Garcia won. I didn't care if Yako Neiman won or if Rom won. It just had no, no meaning. And it was just weird because they're playing like the 16th hole and they got, they got music playing and everything like that. And it just doesn't feel, it just doesn't, it's still, it doesn't feel like you're watching a golf tournament. It just really doesn't. It's just like a, like it's just a, you know, it's an exhibition where they're just hitting golf shots and playing around a round of golf. Like you go to, uh, you go to your local country club and you got dudes in, in the cart and they're playing, you know, they're playing music there. And that's just kind of what it was. And it was like, it's just kind of weird. And, 
<laughs> it was kind of funny to watch John Rahm, though. I don't know if you caught any of it, um, but uh, John Rahm was just he was not having it with that music. He was just not interested. Um, he was actually, you know, you've watched John Rahm in person when he hasn't played well. I mean, you can attest to this. You have seen him in the flesh. I have not. It's frightening. Um, yeah. John Rahm was hitting a couple. He hit a couple bad shots here and there. He snipe hooked one into the into the gorse um, down there. And I don't know if Mexican is a Mexican gorse. I don't know what it is. But anyways, he snipe hooked it and didn't even react. I mean, it was just like, whatever, man. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. he just he took his drop, didn't throw a club, didn't slam anything down the stretch. He he kind of toe hooked it, uh, drive into the bunker when he needed to make birdie and didn't really get mad at himself at all. And I was like, I don't, I don't like this John Rom. And I just think that I think he knows it's just, it is what it is. Yeah. He wants to play good golf. He just wants to, cause he's competitive and yeah. you know, like all these guys, all these guys want to play good just because it's fun to play good golf. And he just, he wasn't worried about playing bad golf. And, and he made some comments at the end of the interview. Yeah. I wish I would have played better, but I'm glad the team won and all that other, you know, shit, but it's just like whatever there. And it's just kind of, it was kind of sad to see. And I, I, I'm sure he'll be back on the PGA tour at one point. And I can't wait for angry John Rom Cause that's, that's one of the best characters out there is, is him when he's, when he's mad. So, but I just didn't see the, the fire that, you know, that you, that you've seen from him. So, yeah. you know, and yeah. I, I watched a little bit of Vegas as well. Vegas was just kind of surviving the, the win and everything like that. But I don't know if you've got any thoughts on, I don't know if you caught any of it. I didn't see either. I, I all I all I read was some hearsay. I, if, you know, I, I know you you told me that about Mayakoba, and and it kind of reiterated what you and I talked about on one of the podcasts we did. It might have been with with Zach. That I just think he he knows he knows what everyone's perception of him is now, and I think he knows, like, yeah, I I don't I didn't love doing this but I had to do it. And, 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 and I don't know if you watched the interview with Dylan Shea on um, you can, you can pretty much look it up, but it was about a 25 minute interview and it's pretty sobering. It's just, it's just kind of like him admitting like, yeah, had to do it, had to take the money, you know, who would, and it's those words that make me think like, he's not, he's not fully bought into this live thing. He's bought into the contract and, everything it provides for him but i don't know man i'm just i'm i'm just bummed he's there i'm bummed dustin johnson's there and, and ultimately just bummed that they're not playing together that's 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 yeah. the big theme of this um i did you know i know you listen to the, the no laying up podcast it's one of my favorites i listen to it every week and they they were talking about live uh las vegas this last week with with dj winning and said you know you would think with the final group of DJ Bryson and I don't know who it was the who was the third on the in the final group, but it was a it was a marquee, marquee player, and they said the product was just unwatchable. And you by the second hole, it was just like yeah. can't watch it. Yeah, I think it was Matthew Wolf um, because okay. okay. he played he played great up until the final round there, and it, it was it was just it, it, the coverage is just it's not. It, it, it's just weird. It's just not hard, you know, not easy. Yeah. And they just, they just try too hard and it's, I don't know. It yeah. just doesn't flow. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if, if Zach was on, I'm sure he'd be fighting us and he would, yeah. he would be fighting me on my comment of DJ being, you know, kind of past his prime and, and, and this, this win proving otherwise I, I did see, and I have in front of me that the final round of Live Las Vegas ranked fifty uh, first in sports programming on Saturday, and it was one spot above the noon Golf Central pregame on Golf Channel. Um, meanwhile, the the second and third round of the Waste Management on Saturday ranked third behind only Sun Warriors and Gonzaga Kentucky. So, um, you know, obviously there was a good field at. At Phoenix, um, it's it's one of the more I guess, and we 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 made the point earlier, you know, mainstream tournaments, non majors that people tune in, but um, it's still way ahead of Live, and I, I you know I I will give it a fair shot the next time. I I honestly forgot it was even on. I forgot they were even playing. 
which I was a little surprised that, again, they were going against this event. Liv was, you know, last year. Couple, yeah. You know, picking they, their spots a little more, I felt like. Well, they wanted to sell a bunch of, of Super Bowl attendees or yeah. people who were yeah. in there for the weekend. So they had it actually a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So the Saturday finished so you could come watch it. And the the, the attendance was just it, – it still wasn't great. Yeah, nothing else to say. I, I just I wanted to at least note that uh, I don't know it, it it happened and it it just it seems like the again the consensus is that the product is still lacking, even with marquee players. Um, let's get on to the Genesis Invitational. Um, where do you want to start with this? Do you want to start with Tiger or do you want to start with the golf course? Let's uh let's start with uh with Tiger here. Yeah. Well Tiger's back this week. Um we haven't seen him since the hero in December where he finished, I believe, eighteenth out of twenty. Um, but looked healthy. Um I don't know if there should be any expectations for this week. I think we usually go to man if Tiger makes the cut, it's probably a hell of a week for him. Um shaking off the rust, uh just Getting around the golf course um, unscathed at this point is always a win. I want to look a little bit longer term, though, past this week. Um, you know, Tiger is he? I think he is forty eight now. As of that, he turned forty eight in December. I think they saw that today. I mean, what at this point? What are, what are you wanting to see when you watch Tiger play golf? There's, is there an expectation of him actually competing and I got winning? I I don't I really don't think so. I really don't think that we're, we're gonna see him competing to win. I mean, if if he can get maybe six months of healthy healthy golf and and everything like that, um he does look very, very healthy. Uh, comparative to and his swing looks good and everything like that but i mean again we've always and i've always harped on it you gotta get reps you gotta get you gotta get in pressure situations and that's kind of how he rose and and uh, you know came back and ended up winning the masters it took him a couple years uh, of playing um the one thing he's got against him uh obviously with the age and all that other stuff but he plays in uh events that are really hard to win first of all I mean, he, you know, his schedule is going to have hard golf courses because that's what he wants to play in. And nowadays, you know, you know, before in his mid twenties, he play a hard golf course and shoot 21 under par and win by, you know, win by five or six shots. Um, you know, and so second place would be like 15 under. Now you got four, five, six, seven, eight guys who are going to hit 20 under on even some of these really, really hard golf courses. Not this week. I don't think, I don't think we're going to see 20 under here at the, at the Riv, but, but what I'm saying is, is, is you play the hard golf courses. Those are typically the best fields because they're, they're the most prestigious of PGA tour events. And, you know, he's, you know, basically it's the majors and like maybe three or four other events. So he's only looking at like eight per season. I mean, right. You know what? I'd love to see him make the cut at at all these events and not finish. You know, t forty five. You know, get into that where he's like on the second page of the leaderboard come Saturday afternoon, and you know, where if he does shoot around, that you know he can kind of get up there. And I think, you know, we've we've counted him out. You know, a lot of people have counted him out. I've probably counted him out multiple times, and. And he's he's proven a lot of people wrong. So I hope I'm wrong. I, I don't mind being wrong, especially wrong at this. Um, but realistically, I mean, this is a 48-year-old guy who hasn't played much golf in a long time, um, who's still obviously very relevant, and I, and, and I hope he plays well. But I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it every single week we talk about it. These dudes are so freaking good now. They're Even the guys who can't make it on tour are so good. And it's just – it's not the same to where he can just, uh, you know, flip a switch and and the body will co- cooperate and and he can get the perfect week and, and win an event. Um, I just unfortunately don't see it, and I wish I I'm wrong, and I'll be the first one to admit it. But I, I just don't see 
I don't see that one last win to be the all-time PGA Tour winner. I don't disagree. I, I think it's really hard to see a path. And I think you, your best point was that it's just the, the tournaments he's playing in are, are literally the best fields. You know, we talked about wanting to play one event a month. Um, you know, I was kind of just looking at some of that. We're talking about the Genesis here in February. Mm-hmm. In March, I, I guess the API or the players, probably the players. Probably the players. Assuming. That course is too hard for them. Yeah. Um, and then in April, obviously the Masters. Masters. It's too bad because like a, a place like Hilton Head just feels like that's a, that's a place that would yeah. fit, fit his game now. Um, yeah. And what he does well now, but he won't be playing there. No. Um, so and then after – the April, PGA in May, the PGA. He can't June, win a PGA in June. The U.S. Open. We know he's not going to win the U.S. Open. Although Pinehurst, yeah. Pinehurst is a little bit, a little bit more doable. It, you can envision it more than they. Uh, that yeah, they, no, I. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that, that that's one that's p- potential, but I mean the field is so good. Yeah, so exactly, exactly, and it's too bad because. I, didn't really, I actually I just realized now the U.S. Open is the week after the Memorial. I was I was kind of hoping there was going to be just some sort of way oh, man. that he was going to be at the Memorial, but he won't be. Um, and well, he's then, not he's not exempt in the U.S. Open, so USGA could. Uh, there, Jesus, can you imagine the USGA not giving him an exemption? Oh my God! So they would they would burn that building <laughs> down. Uh, July the Open, and then yeah. August would be. Um, I mean that's the playoffs, and I don't, I don't know if he's gonna make the top one twenty. Oh, it's top seventy now. Sorry, top seventy. Um, so yeah, you're right. I mean, we're talking about majors or signature events with incredible fields or the players, and it's just it's hard. It's hard to see a path forward him winning, much less top ten, top twenties. Um, but I'm just gonna. I, enjoy it for what it is watching him play golf and um you know these things never these things never usually end well in sports there's never like the very rarely do you see the guy right off into the sunset winning like like a john elway did a couple super bowls um you know more often you see it like how it's going for clay thompson these days and it's not it's not fun to watch it's kind of sad and um, that's kind of the way it goes in sports. Usually, you know, you, you, the Brady's and LeBron's playing this late in their career and excelling. It's just, it's not that common, especially Tiger with the mountain of injuries he's had to deal with. Um, this is just where we're at. And uh, yeah. so I'm just going to enjoy watching him play. Um, this is a signature event as, as we've talked about, this is, I, I believe the third already uh, this season, um, so 70 guys, uh, t- top 50 make the cut. So only a few going home. Or if we are within 10. Or if you're within 10. Correct. So they can take more than 50. Correct. Um, so it, this is, this is literally the guys that, you know, qualified for this event or they've, they've, they're winners this year, or if they're on that weird Aon reward list. Um, you're in the field this week because of that. But guys that are playing really, really well. Um, talk about the golf course, though. This is this is our favorite, right? Yeah, this is this is a just such a great layout. I mean, it is. I don't know how old the golf course is um, when it was built, but it's par 71, 7,300 yards. Um, it's just got some just great holes. It's got big trees and, and uh, um, the way the green complexes are, are, are real fascinating. And it just makes you think you're so think your way around the golf course. And it's just, I mean, it's just great architecture all the way around. Um, it's most famous hole probably is the 10th hole, the, the drivable par par four. Um, a lot of guys can kind of hit it up there with the three wood and get it up to pretty close. And it's got this really tiny, like bean shaped green and that slopes away from you. And it's extremely severe and you can't get up and down from the bunkers that are, that are green side. So you really got to place your tee shot in the right area there, but each hole has got just 
uh, there is just really, really good. And, you know, you look at a course like Torrey Pines, that's just got holes that are just straight as an arrow. These ones all have little dog legs and you've got different angles that you've got to want to come in from, from the fairway. Cause just to get to some of these pins, uh, just a great, a great golf course, great layout. It's one of Tiger's favorite golf courses. He's always struggled here, which is, which is kind of funny, but this golf course always seems to bring out, especially the last decade or so, um, but they've really kind of treated this golf tournament as as high as it should be, as far as uh, you know relevance and importance and everything. It really brings out good ball strikers, good golfers, because um, you really gotta you really gotta think your way around the golf course. And and uh, I love watching it because, like I said, the, the layout is great, and I just like how these guys. You can't just beat it with length. Yeah, I think it is one of those golf courses where mm. one of the few on on tour these days were. Um, I think angles into the greens really matter, mm-hmm. like proper, you got to be in the proper place in the fairway, not just hitting the fairway in general. Um, you know, think of a hole like the 12th hole. And, and by the way, I think it's pretty cool if you watch this tournament for as long as I know you and I have, where now it's like, I know all these holes. I know I can, I can pretty much watch the whole round and I'm familiar with these holes, especially the back nine. And, um, it, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of fun. You know what to expect where the scoring uh, areas are, you know, you, you got to get, you like to get one on 10, you want, want to get one on 11, survive 12, you know, then you've got 17 as a, as a late chance. Um, so I, I just, yeah. And it, it just looks fucking fantastic on TV. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it is my yeah, favorite course to watch on TV and it's kind of set down in, in the Hills there and it just looks incredible. Uh, it'd be one of those that would be a bucket list course for sure. Um, and it's a great field. I mean, guys love playing here and, uh, it's cool to see the top guys, uh, come play this course. So let's get into the odds here and see if we can figure out who can win this. And, and maybe we should just go right to the hundred to one range <laughs> and, uh, pick a guy based on recent history. Um, I, you know, before we went live, we were talking, I was talking about like, wow, the, the top here is so condensed. And I don't know if I've, I mean, I only see this in the majors and you have so many guys that are 20 to one or under because all the top names are here. But Scotty, of course, kind of riding all the ball striking wave he's on is at six and a half to one. Rory is at 10 to one. Uh, he did not, uh, his last appearance at Pebble did not, I don't know. He did. he play last week? He wasn't at Who's Phoenix. That? Rory. No, he was at Pebble. Sorry. No, Pebble. Pebble was not great for Rory. Uh, Xander at 14. Victor at 14. Canley at 16. Justin Thomas at 16. Cow at 16. Homa at 18. Burns at 20. Ludwig at 20. Feet at 25. Adam Scott at 25. And Fina at 30. Um, yeah, that's, that's a tough – that's a tough – uh, top of the board to dissect and kind of figure out who who's the guy, a couple guys that you like that do your best. Whew. Yeah, I think the uh, like I said, I, I think we're going to finally see our first, uh, uh, um, not favorite, but we're going to fe- see our first uh, kind of low lower odds guy win this week because I think just what's what the golf course is going to end up demanding there. Um, you know, everybody's going to first ask, what about Scotty at plus 650? Uh, the putter is just not not what I feel comfortable with with uh, with working with. He's always played waste management really, really well. Obviously, two-time champion there. So, you know, he can kind of ham and egg his way around it there and miss putts, make putts and everything and still finish really, really well. I just don't like him this week here. But a um, couple of the guys I do like, um, I'm – I'm liking Justin Thomas. I don't love JT this week, but he's got the skill set to to do really well around this golf course here. I mean, he can he can drive it. He can you know iron plays good. Uh, the putting is is, is kind of getting there. Um, I, I like him. Um, Sam Burns is another guy I like. He's played well here before. Um, he's been playing really really good golf too, and that's kind of the the thing with him is he just kind of you know, you don't hear about him for a little while and then you're like, he pops up on your radar and then he gets a little better, a little bit better, a little bit better. And then boom, he, he'll, he'll uh, reel off a win there or, or two. So with 
the course history and everything. And, if, and I think it kind of fits him with being a good driver of the golf ball. And um, he's getting, he's a much better, much better iron player. Uh, and, and the putting seems to be there. And then I'll have to ride him again. I, I liked him last week. I did bet him. He would have probably been my best bet um, um, had we had them. But uh, um, the California kid, um, Max Homa, um, I think him missing the cut last week was a good thing because that kind of allowed him to go home, not have to deal with all the weather stuff and, and give him a couple extra days to get some practice in because this is his – this is his big event. I mean, this is his major um, yeah. uh, of all the events there. He's won it before. Uh, he's actually finished well at a lot of a lot of other times here. So him at uh, plus 1,800, if you could find it in a parlay or even um, – they'll probably offer in some sort of, of boost on DraftKings to get him above 20 um, and even yeah. putting him in the top 10 bet as well. Um, I'm, I'm going to be on max again this week. Hmm. You know, I, I think I think I know Zach always says we we agree with each other too much, and uh, actually, uh, actually, one guy I was going to fade was Max Homa this week. Max, well, now why are you going to fade Max? Okay, well, obviously the course history is is on his side for sure, um, but I don't like the way he's been playing the last two weeks, and I don't like the, what the stats tell me on Data Golf that he's been losing strokes off the tee. And he's barely gaining on approach and uh, missed a cut last week, T66 at Pebble. Um, and I just, I just don't like the way the ball striking's trending for me um, to truly contend this week. I think it makes the cut, um, but I just, I don't see him winning this week based off of recent form. Um, I do like JT. <laughs> it's, it's going to be, it's going to be gross for a long time with JT until he wins um, just week after week, probably. But I, I, I am, I am attracted to the JT and Morikawa numbers at 16, both of them. Um, Fantastic iron players. And JT seems to have reef found that and his short game this week or this year so far has been pretty incredible as well. Um, I do think that is a nice asset to have here as well he's gained strokes around the green um in every event going back to the the fall um so i like that he's when he's missing greens he's getting up and down um and i'm just looking at his results since since the fortnet the first event fifth fourth uh third at hero um t3 american express t6 at pebble t12 at, at phoenix so i mean He's he's putting together a lot of nice finishes, and now we're at the point where can he cap it with a win? So sixteen to one's good. You can get it at nineteen, like you mentioned at DraftKings, and um, you know I'm just going to be a sucker for Morikawa winning one of these LA events or California events until he actually does. Um, so I'll I'll be on a Morikawa as well. Um, the other guy that is really really interesting to me, um, and I don't disagree about Burns is. Uh, uh, Ludwig at, at 20. Um, you I'm going to ask you what you thought about him this week. Yeah, just, just the driving ability is going to just, I think, set him up really nicely. I don't believe he's played here, at least as a professional. Um, so that's always a bit of a concern, but he seems to he seems to not have that affect him, at least, I mean, uh, this last year since he became professional. I yeah, mean, when you're that good, I mean, <laughs> Hey, seriously, play. game translates everywhere. I mean, did did I, I? You probably saw the stat somewhere where the only guy that to ascend in the world rankings faster uh, in a shorter span was Tiger. Um, mm-hmm. So I mean, this guy is. I, mean, I should. I thought about in our bold predictions. You know, first first show a couple weeks ago. Um, I, I thought about making the, the claim that I think Ludwig could be number one by the end of the season. By the end of the season. By the end of the season. Okay. Now, that's 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 probably a year ahead of schedule, but sometimes these things happen. I mean, who knows? He could win three times and uh, one one big event. And um, I I just think he's that good. I just think he's in a, like the elite elite driver, like like Rory is. Um, I don't really think he wins this week, but I I I can be talked into it. I also liked Adam Scott, but until I saw him at twenty five, I was like, no, I can't. 
25 is too short. Way too short. Um, incredible history here, though, and mm. it sets up so nicely for his game. But yeah, 25 is is a really, really short. Yeah, like I, I, I thought about Adam Scott. He'd be great in like a DFS, um, mm-hmm. even if he's going to be pretty expensive this week. But yeah, 25 to one on there is just was was just a little much. I can't believe, though, you said a guy who's never played in a major might be number one by the end of this year. Where's I, I don't, is he top 10 now in the rankings? Is he around 10th? Aber, uh, I'd say top, I would guess top 15. Um, yeah, it's it's probably a little bit uh, over my ski saying that, but he can get to number five in the world. I mean, okay, so, so, like, this week. so like John Rahm, when he came out, was like all world type of hype as as a bear has has got i mean do you, is that kind of what you're thinking like he could be you know ascend to be like a john rom he's number 11 yeah probably. yeah okay 11th yeah uh yeah i think that's actually a really nice comparison i think i think he's a little older than when rom rom was around what 20 or 21 right because 20 or 21 yeah and is an April already 23, 24. Yeah. So he's a little older, which is kind of dumb to say that 24 is older. But, um, but yeah, I think that's a nice comparison. I, I just think he's that talented and he's got that much upside and that high of a ceiling. Um, 30, uh, 35 to 50. Clark uh, at 35, Fleetwood. Uh, Tagal at 35, Fitzpatrick, Cam Young at 35, Poston at 45, Zalatoris, Tom Kim, Hogard, Jason Day at 50. What do you got there? I kind of don't really like this group. I really, really don't like the guys for the numbers there. Um, I don't mind Tagala really any week. Um, yeah. Don't Don't love him at this golf course, but I don't hate it either. I mean, that's, that that's one, that's one I wouldn't, wouldn't be too bad at. Mm-hmm. Wyndham Clark intrigues me. I, you know, I know, I know he just won a couple weeks ago, so he's playing good golf and, and, and everything. And, you know, this feels like a golf course that uh, would really, really suit his game. Um, and, and just kind of carry over the good play from, uh, from, from Pebble, um, which by the way, how would you like to, just real quick, how would you like to be like, oh, yeah, I won the Pebble Beach Pro-Am, and now I have the course freaking record at Pebble Beach. I mean, Pebble Beach, just being like that, that's that's just me. I've got the course record there. Nobody has ever shot that low at Pebble that's, Beach. Yeah. Jesus Christ, that is, yeah. that's cool enough in itself. But anyways, I, do, I don't mind Wyndham. 3,500 is, I think, pretty fair for him. Um, not really going to. Do much. I'd love to bet Cam Young. I'd love to root for him this week, especially with how good he played. Was it last year or two years ago? Was it last year? I think so. Yeah, that was, was. When the, it was when Neiman won it. Cam Young played great golf, but can you just trust that putter? It's just like with Scotty Scheffler. Um, can you can you trust him making putts there? And he played pretty good last week. Um, so there there is some yeah. intrigue there. But I'm going to kind of stay away from this one with the exception of I might look at the top 10 or top 20 markets in uh, uh, of of Clark, Thigala, and Cam Young. Yeah, Cam finished second in 22 and uh, 20th last year. Um, I did bet him last week. And I, for a while, I thought there was some possibility I'll probably do it again this week, to be honest with you. I just think – I think it is – I'll yeah. probably – I might just – because it feels like he's he's not far, but he's felt like he's not far for a while. But I, I, I just think Riv would be one of those courses where it's, it's it suits his game, you know, pretty closely to a T. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I did predict the, the Tommy Fleetwood – uh, win this season. I don't think it's going to be here, but certainly see a path. Uh, but it, Tommy on Sunday versus Thursday through Saturday, we we've seen that story before, and I, I think it's it's hard to trust um, in a field this good as well. Um, so I'm I, I I'm with you. I I probably won't do much in this range either, besides Cam Young. Um, I'll probably see if I can 
find a spot for him that's better than 35 or if it's a parlay with something safe just to kind of get a little bit more. Uh, 55 and above. Um, you know, we mentioned earlier that it's it seems like we're due to have someone in the top, you know, the top of the odds board win one of the 20, 25 to ones or under, but, um, you know, there's certainly some names down here. I do like Hideki down there at 70. Um, he played reasonable last week. And then, um, I, I, you know, with him, I think there's always health concerns and but from a ball striking aspect, you got to like him here as, as far as a match for the course. Um, I don't know anyone else on the board here. There, there's a there's a couple names that I'm I'm a little bit interested in. Um, I don't mind Kurt Kitayama um, playing some pretty good golf there. Uh, he, he plays good golf. Plays hard golf courses pretty well. I mean, he's a pretty complete player. Um, it's just a go all goes with the uh, with the putting and everything. There's a little concern with his driving, which can get a little bit a uh, little bit crooked. But uh, if he's if he's driving the ball well, like he did with uh, the API last year. Um, when you couldn't miss fairways, he was he was hitting all the fairways and and ended up winning uh, an elevated event. So, you know, he's proven he can do that, and he's he's played pretty solidly uh, on the West Coast here. So, I don't mind him at uh, plus sixty five hundred. And obviously, if you like him in a in a top ten market, there, um, I thought Nick Taylor, who obviously just won two days ago, uh, at plus nine thousand. I he's not going to win back to back, but. You know, there, there's there's good golf to be had, and so whether it's like, do you, do you like him to to finish top ten or or top twenty? I wouldn't hate that one there. Um, your your uh, your guy Luke List jumped out at me. Um, I'm gonna yeah. put some money on him. Plus, what is that? Uh, 110 to one odds to win. Yeah, uh, I'll be putting some money on him. That's a that's a good number with uh, with some decent golf there. So. I don't hate that one at all. Yeah, um, I don't either. It, it's it's it would be his type of course. It would be his type of course. So you know, and he, he just won last in the in the fall series. So you know, he he get you get. I mean, you're going to get appropriate odds like that. You're going to get good golf. You're going to get bad golf. You might end up you know running into a win there and and uh, or playing pretty well there. And then the the final name that I like, well, not finally, but but Kevin Yu, um, at 150 to one he's a good iron player yeah uh, very good iron player and he's had some uh um points this this uh this season here where he's been in contention and uh you know it's just a matter of, of putting it all together there again 150 to one so you're kind of sprinkling on a win bet and then you could look at him in a, in a top 10 or top 20 and uh you know i i don't think that that's a that's a bad option at all but he's a good one if you're like you know what Strasser and Miller, somebody at a hundred and one or more is going to win, win because that's just how it's going. Um, the, he would be one of my guys that I'd throw money on. I had him circled. I did. Um, yeah. That's that was going to be my next mention. He played some really good golf in back to back weeks. Uh, what's it? Uh, American Express and um, I forget what he he had two back to back weeks where he was really really good and um you know it certainly ribs a different challenge but still um i i thought about throwing out there uh, taylor montgomery at, at 130 to one um someone that's very long and a great putter, putter. um but and it, it, he's had a bit of a, a comeback from a really poor second half of last season at least he's he's surfacing um, probably a top 10, top 20 market on him is more likely. Um, I, I, you know, Rick is going the wrong way again, it seems like. Um, really poor week in Phoenix, and that's that sent him down he, the, the board. Yeah, here, but. He, he's been testing putters. I think it's kind of the same putter with different inserts. So he's kind of – he's searching right now. And I, I, I mean, it's a good number for him, but I think it's a very realistic number. And – I, I don't see him winning, although Wyndham Clark did that, switched uh, to a different right. insert in his putter, and ended up now he's the he's the course record holder at Pebble Beach. So, you know, everything that we think we know is is not you know is what we don't know. So, 
I don't know what you just said. I don't either. Yeah. I don't either. Yeah, um, Genesis Invitational what, this week. What, uh, one more, hey, one, one more thing here. I wanted to mention. If you do want to root for Tiger, um, oh yeah, yes, yes, he, yes. He is. Uh, I I would not consider uh, uh, a win bet on him, uh, uh, as we just discussed. He is minus one twenty five to make the cut, which is either ten shots off the lead or top fifty in ties. Um, if you if you want something to root for, you know, with minimal juice, I know it is juiced at minus 125 currently, and it's probably going to go up to, I'd say by Thursday, it's probably going to go up to 140, minus 140. So, you know, that's, that's not bad if you want something to root for and, and just to, just to hope that he can play, you know, put a couple good rounds and, and, you know, shoots, shoot some decent scores and make some money while you're at it. You could put him in a make the cut parlay. Um, you could do that with, with a couple safe guys that you feel like would be safe, like uh, yeah. Rory or, or JT and, get them in plus odds and yeah that's probably that's probably your best bet from a tiger interest on on you know having some rooting interest and it's just not likely he's going to finish in the top 20 or 30 um i just it, it would be hard to envision now watch him go shoot like 69 69 and he's in like t8 going saturday and that would be that'd be fun as hell Hell yes um yeah genesis invitational this week should be awesome uh we'll have this show up on wednesday so we'll follow up with our picks as well later in the day wednesday um johnny strauser thanks for uh thanks for getting through it less than 100 percent. let's enjoy this week let's enjoy it and uh everyone thanks for listening to your best bet check us out on youtube apple Podcasts, and spotify as always thanks for listening And we'll catch you next time.